This time of year, spring, is, is so nice when you live in a seasonal country and you get all the fresh leaves um, growing. The vibrancy of the green in the foliage of the different trees is just outstanding um, and is absolutely beautiful. It's a great morning to be able to get out early when the sun's just coming through those really young leaves and you can see the, they're slightly transparent. Um, and it's just a beautiful time of year here in the UK. In Surrey, we don't have the big um, hero mountains or lakes, but what we do have is that quintessentially English woodland. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. So I thought I'd stop for a minute and just uh, collect my thoughts, have a bit of breakfast. It's been a beautiful morning. Um, it's pretty quiet and tranquil out here, just me and the wildlife. And the old plane going overhead, which is mildly annoying. Um, but that's uh, what you get when you live around London and you've got some pretty busy airports around there. So one of the reasons I came out this morning was to put the Nikon um, Z mount 2470F 2.8 through its paces. I've had the f4 version of the 24-70 Z mount lens for um, a few months now and I've really liked it. Um, it's, despite what other people have said perhaps, I think it's quite well built. Its size and its weight to its capability is outstanding. It's an amazingly sharp lens and its autofocus is virtually silent but really tack sharp. However, when I look through my portfolio of images, my back catalogue, and I look at what lenses I have used and at what apertures and what focal lengths, the 2470 f2.8 f mount has been my go to lens for many years. For example, when I went to Japan, I was really weight constrained. I actually, in the end, just took my D850 and the 2470 f2.8 because that gave me uh, an envelope of performance that would cope with pretty much anything I would come up against. I could turn the 2470 into a 36105 with a DX crop, not losing too many pixels, so I could still crop in. I could print at a 3, a 2. The f2.8 allowed me to do low light, so it was a brilliant combination and it meant I didn't have to carry multiple other lenses because we were weight constrained on some of the activities we were doing. So the f-mount f2.8 has been a real go-to lens for me and therefore whilst the f4 is a great lens I was using it at the weekend in a natural light portrait um, environment inside a house it was quite dark and it was the first time that I found the autofocus struggled to capture um, and in the end I had to use exposure compensation to let more light into the lens so the autofocus could capture the um, focus point and then adjust the, um, the, the light levels back down, the exposure back down again. Um, and there's no doubt whilst I like the images that I got from that photo shoot they would have been a notch better probably if I'd had f2.8 with me. I had a 50mm f1.8, but the restrictions in being able to move around inside quite small rooms meant the 50mm I could have done with a zoom at f1.8. And I didn't have that right combination of lenses. And then you throw into the, the mix having to switch lenses in a constrained space when you're under pressure. Really wasn't ideal. So I've got a, um, a Z mount f2.8 2470 and whilst it's slightly heavier what 300 grams more than the f4 actually for me because it widens the envelope and um, for the style of shooting I'm doing when I'm traveling or when I'm doing portrait it gives me the the size of envelope that actually means I don't have to carry other kits so that I can trade off the extra weight of the 2470 f2.8 versus what I would have to carry in terms of extra lenses or, or other equipment. It's not about the image quality. As I say, the F4 2470 is an outstanding lens from an image quality perspective.
and if you look at some of the reviews that have been done, there's been some really good reviews where um, there's been a comparison between the 2470 F2.8 Z mount and the F mount, the 2470 Z mount F2.8 and the F4. And what it shows is that the image quality difference between the F4 and the F2.8 Z mount lenses is marginal unless you really get down to 100 to 1 or even 200 to 1 in some situations. And there are very few use cases where you need that image quality in that scenario. So for me, it wasn't that that's driving this, the image quality. It's more about the, the use case and the envelope of capability of a Z7 combined with the uh, 2470 f2.8. That extra stop gives a number of different trade-offs you can play with it. Most of my work is natural light. I don't have um, the luxury of being able to control the light and therefore that stop can be um, a real blessing when combined with the high dynamic range of the Z7. Interestingly with the D850 and the F-mount 2470 f2.8 it was an almost an essential combination because the d850 when it was bought out was increasingly picky about the glass you put with it um, and therefore having that f2.8 the quality in the f mount f2.8 2470 was really required for a lot of the work i was doing i think with the f4 um, Z mount 2470 Nikon have created something that means actually if you want a lightweight compact high quality combination that's a brilliant combination my plans are that I will use the 2470 f4 as my go-to 2470 for perhaps street photography when I want to be slightly more discreet for traveling where actually weight and size is really important and it allows me to then perhaps take two or three lenses. Where I will use the 2470 f2.8 is where I know I'm going to be shooting in low light, where I know I'm going to be shooting natural light portraits and I want that depth of field um, benefit from the f2.8. What was interesting was when I compared the Z mount f2.8 2470 with the F mount 2470 f2.8, the real noticeable difference was and there's a slight size and weight difference and there's other people who have reviewed that so I'm not going to necessarily do a comparison on that basis but when you try to use it for video and there are occasions where I'm going to be carrying just my Z7 2470 and I want to do some video with that combination rather than my Z6 the Z mount lens is near silent when it comes to autofocus continuous autofocus the F mount lens noticeably clatters now um, and is almost a generation different in in its feel when you're using it for continuous autofocus. One of the benefits of mirrorless or one of the twe tweaks I've had to make to my shooting style um, in using mirrorless is whereas with my D850 I used to um, shoot a lot single point single autofocus um, with my Z6 and Z7 what I'm now shooting in is actually continuous autofocus and therefore when you put the F mount lenses onto a Z um, series body and you use continuous autofocus it does make quite a racket. Um, there is a constant chatter even when you move a millimetre um, and therefore that makes quite a bit, big difference in some scenarios where you want to be slightly quieter or slightly more discreet. Interestingly here in the UK the 14 to 30 mil wide angle Z mount lens is in more short supply than the 2470 f2.8. Um, I think what people have realised is that the quality of the 2470 f4 Z mount lens is more than adequate for 90 probably 90, 90 plus percent of use cases. And when traded against the weight and size benefits, I think we'll see the vast majority of people shooting with that lens, and rightly so. It's an exceptional lens. Whereas with the F mount um, 2470 f2.8, it was more a um, uh, had a slightly wider appeal. The Z mount equivalent is going to be quite a niche lens. 
it's going to come down to use cases that drive people to needing that lens and therefore perhaps that's why there's more availability of it people are holding back really thinking through what are their use cases my aim with this channel is not to necessarily come to market quickly to be the first to market with here's a review of the new um, Z mount 2470 f 2.8 it's more about a practical real world assessment of pieces of gear in combination with technique and looking at how you then use that to create a final outcome image so it's the reality of using it and that's why I'm out here today is really with that 2470 f 2.8 to really try it out a bit in a a real world scenario to see what the quality is how I get on with it so as I said my goal isn't to necessarily come out to be the first to market with a new review it's about giving you an insight into the reality of using some of the new gear that's coming out around mirrorless cameras because there is quite a lot of innovation that's coming out and that makes it quite exciting as a, a, a space and a market within photography and videography. So far I've been pretty impressed with the f2.8 lens. It feels solid as people have said. I never had a problem with the feel and the build quality of the f4 lens to be honest with you. Um, I know some people say oh, well, that one's made in Thailand and the f2.8 is made in Japan. I haven't seen a noticeable difference in quality. They're both weather sealed. In fact, I would say the f4 has a very slightly faster autofocus than perhaps the f2.8, possibly because you know, the weight of glass in the f2.8 makes it, you know, it, it, the motors have to work harder perhaps. Other differences between the two lenses, well, the f4 you have to click to get it into 24mm and start shooting, which takes a bit of getting used to but it's not the end of the world you do get a more compact lens for that when you're traveling the um, f2.8 you're straight and you pull it out of your bag there's no turn it on it would be great if Nikon could combine the on the f4 lens that when you click to open the lens it turned the camera on so you combine the functionality that would be just brilliant it would save um, an additional flick of a switch not a massive issue but it would just be a real neat little uh, innovation there Nikon so if you're if you're watching um, have a look at that see if you can do it I'm sure you can the display on the f2.8 not a massive use to me um, yet maybe there'll be functionality that will come to life later the additional buttons I'm still getting used to I'm not used to having buttons there so I'm training my muscle memory and working out what I will program those with um, so all in all it's um, a nice lens. At the moment, there's there's a couple of really good deals on them. For me, when I looked at uh, the deal I was offered and also the trade-in that I was getting on my F-mount F2.8 lens, the cost of change is probably as low now as it will be for the foreseeable future. Um, so for me, it was a relatively simple decision to make. So I hope you found this uh, slightly rambly video um, useful. Um, I'll put some images up that I've captured with the um, Z mount 2470 f 2.8 this morning um, at the end and you can have a look for yourself and see um, what what I managed to achieve this morning so far I've been pretty impressed if you're thinking about the f 2.8 Z mount lens drop a comment below about what it is that's attracting you what it is that perhaps is stopping you from um, transitioning It'd be great to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you in future videos over and out from leafy Surrey Thank you.